We came to Chillicothe to help find out who was killing young mothers. Instead, we discovered the larger backdrop that is ultimately responsible for these deaths. The opiate epidemic is killing many thousands in Ohio and across the country every year. In June of 2015, I stood on the courthouse steps with a, a group of law enforcement folks, and there was a huge community rally. Hundreds of area high school students took to the streets to raise their voices against what was happening in their community. And it was an amazing sight. These weren't kids that were just there to get a, a, a day out of school. They were active, and they were engaged, and they were chanting. It's an inspiring thing to see. That felt like the turning point for a lot of this stuff. The community itself became much more acutely aware of what's going on. Drugs and the community's reaction to it, um, the missing women, the folks decided that enough is enough. I'm not gonna have Chillicothe known for anything other than being the first capital of Ohio and an amazing, amazingly great place to live. We're trying to get away from talking about the problem and focus on the people who are providing the solutions and the people who are coming through. How many of you that are here today know someone in, that's OD'd? You just raise your hand. Keep your hands up if it's a family member. And uh, it's wonderful to have Joe with us yeah. today. Thanks for having me. You know, we've been doing the story about what's been going on in Chillicothe and some of the surrounding towns. And what brought us here initially was the victims in Chillicothe. Did that have an impact, you know, when women started going missing? I think that's when, like, everyone realized that stuff was really happening. You can't even walk into a public restroom without seeing the remains of someone who's been struggling with a drug addiction. Like, you see it, it's all around you, and you think that it doesn't affect you, but it does. We're not gonna be that generation that leaves the remains of our struggles and our addictions laying around for the other people to have to bear with us. I'm just curious, what, what does MADE mean and how did that name come about? So, MADE is an acronym for My Attitude Determines Everything. It's a great name and it's a great thought, but then how do you put that into practice? The unique thing about this program is that it is student-led and that's incredibly important in changing the culture because it's not an adult telling us that we don't need to do drugs or a law enforcement officer. It is students around you saying, hey, there's a better option, um, and that your attitude determines the person that you're going to be. We all have different backgrounds, different religions, different friend groups, um, different paths of life. And to see everyone step up and unite as one is just an awesome thing to see. I feel like I'm making a difference. I have family members that struggle every day, and I see what it does to people. Like, it hurts me every day. Drugs have affected me in a big way. I've been to, like, 12 different schools because of it. My dad went to prison because of it. You know, I just see all that stuff that happens to my family when I don't want my kids to go through it. One of my friends, he watched his father um, overdose right in front of him. He joined the program, you know. He wanted to hold himself accountable. I have a mom and a dad that's never been involved in my life at all, and they've never been to my birthdays, they've never been to my Christmases. Uh, it's always been my grandparents, who I basically call my mom and dad now. I had a past with drugs myself. I didn't like who I was becoming. I was losing family. Nobody could trust me. I was stealing for drugs. I was doing this and that. I dropped out of high school just to do drugs. But one time, I just had an epiphany, said, just put it down, like, just stop. And I put it down, never picked it up again, and I love who I am now. I want people to know that they don't have to be involved in this, that there is a way to stay out of it. Both of my parents are police officers in Chillicothe, so I kind of have an interesting perspective on the situation, like coming home, saying, Mom, where's Dad? Oh, well, he had to go to work because they had four overdoses in less than an hour. And what do you want people to know about Chillicothe, since most of the image that they're getting from mm -hmm. in the news is that it's a place that's just gone out of control? 
I have great pride in my town, and I've seen what drugs have done to it. And everyone says, oh, well, you know, drugs are everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. But I've seen it in my, in my place, my town. I just love my town, and I don't want to see drugs take, take over. And this club has allowed me, it's given me some power. And a lot of times kids feel helpless. They feel like they don't have a voice and they don't have the ability to make any difference. This has given us the power to do that. And it's given us the power to affect those our age and that's gonna affect our future. It's so refreshing to talk to you guys. I mean, really, it's very inspiring. Um. <laughs> we may never win this war, but we will not go down without fighting and we will not go down you know, without trying to make a better community for all of the folks that live here, because it's important. And we can't let our, our small towns die. They're such a great place to live and to raise families. And we are gonna fight because it is exactly what we need to do, and it is our moral imperative to do.